Welcome back. In this video we make a puzzle board with three storage drawers and I get to use my thin strip jig and hear the satisfying sound of a click when the storage drawers slide into place. Steve Ramsey from Woodworking for Mere Mortals has said that most woodworking projects are based on a box and in this case he's right because essentially we're going to build four boxes three drawers, and one case to hold them. We start off by dimensioning some lumber for the sides back and front, and these pieces are about 5 eighths of an inch wide, and overall this will end up about 32 inches wide by about 25 inches deep, and about 3 inches high. When making a box of any sort, there are two really important things to keep in mind. The first is that your miters are as close to 45 degrees as you can get them. I use one of those tilt boxes to accurately set my table saw to the correct angle. It makes life much, much easier. The second is that the pieces on opposite sides from each other are exactly the same length. I don't have a jig big enough to set stop blocks to accomplish this for this build, so I'm going to have to carefully cut and compare sides as I'm going. You see there I'm laying them back to back and making sure they come to a perfect point. Now these are going to need a few grooves cut into them, which we'll do at the table saw. We need a groove along the bottom to hold the bottom panel, a groove along the top to hold the top panel, and then I decided I wanted to inlay a strip of walnut along the outside for just a little added interest, and I've never done it before, so I wanted to try something new. I'm cutting the top grooves a little looser than they need to be. This is because I have to glue the bottom panel in first and add some pieces for the inside drawers and then add the top panel after. And I was a little worried that getting the top panel in was going to be a little bit difficult because it was so large and once the bottom panel is in place there will be hardly any give in the frame to help slide the panel in. For the inlay all I did here was use my table saw to rip a strip down the middle of the board and then use my thin strip cutting jig to rip some pieces of walnut to the correct width. The thin strip jig is not my own creation. I got it from Tamar at 3x3 Custom who got it from Colin Connect who probably got it from somewhere else. I'll put links in the description to Tamar's video but I like this jig because the thin pieces I cut are usually longer than the infeed side of my table saw. I'll use it again in a moment and you'll see how it works a little better. I glue those pieces in place and set them aside to dry. Once dry, I come back with the hand plane and bring the inlay down so it's flush with the face. I only have this one hand plane, it was my father's and I think his father's before him, so I love using it. Those curls are just so satisfying when they come out of the plane. I then finish it up with a hand sander to get a nice flush finish. For the front piece, I need to cut it into a few pieces so that I have space for the drawers. So for the original glue up, I rip cut the bottom groove off the front piece and set the rest aside for later use. I'm going to assemble these using green painter's tape and make hinges between each of the adjoining pieces and then adding some glue and folding everything together. I don't have a strap clamp which would be really useful here so instead I go around after everything is together and give each corner a good squeeze. If I see glue squeeze out or either side move I add some more tape to help pull it together. Not perfect but it works well enough until I get a strap clamp. Now since there's a little bit of a lip on the bottom that the drawers will get caught on I want to raise the bottom where the drawers will go so it's flush with that lip. Using my calipers, I get the exact depth I need and then head over to the table saw and my thin strip jig. I'll start by placing the jig next to the blade and then that bolt I can adjust so that it is the right distance from the blade as set by the measurement from my calipers. Because it's a threaded bolt, you can get a very accurate measurement. Once it is set, I use the wing nut to lock the bolt in place. I then move the jig back to in front of the blade. 
I put the stock that I'm going to use for the strips on the table and move the fence over until it touches the bolt. I lock the fence in place and then I can rip as many strips I like of that thickness that I need. I'll leave a link in the description to Tamara's video where she builds one. Those thin strips are then glued to the bottom of the board so that the bottom is raised where the drawers will be sitting so they don't catch on that front lip. I use some gravity clamps and let it dry. To put these dividers in place, I basically measure the width of the opening on the inside of the frame, subtract the width of the dividers, and then divide by three. I can then cut a spacer block that I can use to set those pieces in place without having to measure and my drawer openings will be perfectly consistent. Making the drawers is pretty much the same as making the puzzle board box itself. The front and backs were easy enough because they were short enough that I could use my 45 degree sled with a stop block so they were cut to the exact same length. The sides were too long for my 45 degree sled. So I butt two pieces together and then mitered them together, making sure that the ends were flush. After the first cut, I reversed the order of the boards and then made sure the butt ends were flush again and made my second cut. I'm sure there's some mathing to explain how this works, but it works and the pieces come out the exact same length. After that, I cut a groove in the pieces to accept the bottom and then glued them in place. Once everything's glued in together, we'll just do a quick check to make sure they're square by measuring the diagonals. To keep the drawers closed, I drill a small hole in the back of each drawer and in each stop block that I'm gluing in place, and I'll put a small magnet in each one. This way, when the, door, the drawers get closed, they'll sort of click close with those magnets, and there'll be a little bit of holding power to keep them from just sliding open. To hold the magnets in place, we'll just use a little bit of two-part epoxy resin. Now that the drawers are done and fit nicely, I can glue on the top board and the front piece and get out my gravity clamps again. Somehow, I did not film creating the drawer fronts and handles, but there they are. Nothing too fancy. Just cut the fronts to a size that leave a nice gap around each one and glued them into place. Now, I'm not as smart as I thought I was because while the drawers are all the same size, I didn't think about putting the stopper blocks at the back in the exact same place for each drawer. So each one has to go in its own compartment so the magnets line up. So to mark which one goes where, I inlay a piece of dowel in one drawer, two dowels in the middle drawer, and three dowels in the last drawer to indicate which slot they belong to. As you can see, I use my vise just to press each dowel into its hole and then use a saw to flush cut it or at least closely flush cut it to the top of the drawer and then a sander just to make it perfectly flush. And there's what you wind up with.
After that, it was just sanding, sanding, and more sanding. I decided I was going to put a divider in each one of the drawers so that there would be more compartments to sort puzzle pieces into. Apparently sorting them by color is a thing that people who do puzzles do, so a divider gave them six options instead of just three. After that, it's off for a coat of finish. We're going to use Danish oil on this one as well. It provides a little bit of protection and also leaves the natural feel of the wood, uh, which is what I like. So that's it. I'll leave links to Steve Ramsey's uh, channel in the description, as well as Tamar uh, at 3x3 Custom, and also links to some of the products that I used in case you wanted to use them yourself. If you... Uh, enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like or a subscription. Thanks very much and have a great day.